Today, Louis Vuitton is one of the largest and most successful companies in the world. However, the narrative of this multi-billion dollar company began with a homeless kid from a very modest background. Watch the video till the end as we tell you all about Louis Vuitton and how he started the now multi-billion dollar company. Louis Vuitton was born on August 4, 1821 in Anchet, a little village in the Jura region of eastern France. Vuitton's family was mostly carpenters, farmers, and milliners, and came from a long-established working-class family. His mother, Coron Gaillard, was a milliner, and his father, Xavier, was a farmer. Consequently, Vuitton spent the most of his childhood tending to the farm's livestock and crops. Vuitton lost his mother when he was just 10 years old. However, his father swiftly remarried, and this time to a woman that proved very bad for Vuitton. After three years, Vuitton's father died, and it was then that Vuitton decided to end his pain and suffering, and left his house alone and on foot, with the intention of traveling to Paris in the spring of 1835. Vuitton was a determined man, and he walked the 292-mile distance from his home in Anchet to Paris over the course of more than two years, working odd jobs to support himself along the way and staying wherever he could find shelter. Despite the fact that the pay from the job was not enough for him to survive, Vuitton learned significant abilities for working with metal, stone, textiles, and wood. Vuitton understood the value of his strong work ethic and perseverance, as he had first-hand experience with poverty. When he arrived in the capital city in 1837, it was in the midst of an industrial revolution that had given rise to a bewildering array of paradoxes, including breathtaking magnificence and utter poverty, rapid growth, and catastrophic diseases. While in Paris, he started to take odd jobs with artists and craftspeople because he had no money or a place to live. By the time Vuitton had arrived in Paris, transportation had grown more convenient for long-distance travel. As long-distance travel became very popular, so did the demand for containers to carry things while traveling. It was then that a man named Maréchal hired Vuitton as an apprentice and showed him how to make sturdy containers. Clients of Monsieur Maréchal soon began to appreciate Vuitton. Then, Eugénie de Montejo, the Empress of France and wife of Emperor Napoleon III, chose Vuitton as her personal box manufacturer. The opportunity to serve for the Empress gave Vuitton several new opportunities. 1854 was a year of great development and transformation for Vuitton. In that year, Vuitton got to know Clémence Emilie Parillot, a beautiful 17-year-old girl, and on April 22, 1854, Vuitton and Parillot were united in marriage, and Vuitton left Maréchal's store to establish his own box-making and packing business in Paris. After a few years, Vuitton's mastery put him in high demand, and he ended up establishing his own store on Rue Neuve des Capucines, where he became known for his creation of bags. At that time, the trunks had rounded tops to allow water to drain, but this did not secure the contents inside. As a result, Vuitton created the first steamer trunk made of gray canvas, known as the Trianon, in 1858. Vuitton's goods were in high demand and were loved by everyone. The standard baggage boxes at the time had a round top and were made of leather. In order to deter theft, Vuitton designed his distinctive canvas boxes with a flat top and a tumbler lock. In little more than two years, Vuitton's box rose to become a popular item. Around 1867, Louis Vuitton made the decision to broaden the scope of his company by introducing more contemporary handbags. Women responded favorably to this invention, and sales of Vuitton handbags skyrocketed as a result. Unfortunately, the Franco-Prussian War broke out in France just as Vuitton's company was booming. Vuitton shut down his shop and relocated to a small sanctuary with other migrants. The family had to live in camps during the war in order to survive, where they became dangerously close to starving to death as the food was very limited. A year later, the battle was finally over, and Vuitton returned home to find his workshop devastated and his supplies missing. In addition, the Prussian triumph had forced Vuitton's patron, the Empress of France, Eugenie, out of power and into exile. Thus, Vuitton had to rebuild his company using his last remaining savings. Following the war, property values significantly decreased, enabling Vuitton to set up shop in a wealthy area of Paris, France. In 1872, after struggling for a few months, Vuitton succeeded in getting his company back on the map. This time, Vuitton introduced his luggage cases with stripes. Many people appreciated this new style, since it was more contemporary and allowed them to stand out. 
the business started to boom again, so much so that in 1885, Louis Vuitton established a store in London, which was the capital of the British Empire and the richest city in the world at that time. Vuitton's company was now beginning to expand internationally with adventurers, American millionaires, and royals becoming his clients. As Vuitton started receiving orders from all around the world, Louis made the decision to incorporate his son George in the company since he was now finding it difficult to work long hours at his age. Then, in 1892, when the business was booming and at new heights, Vuitton unexpectedly passed away. After his death, George Vuitton took over the company and partnered with John Wanamaker, the U.S. Postmaster General at that time. John Wanamaker was the one who invented the idea of department shops and price tags. Wanamaker began carrying Louis Vuitton goods in his department store in New York, and in 1896, George designed a monogram in commemoration of his father that had a floral motif with an interlocking L and V. It was also an instant success. The company kept on increasing in value, which was evident from its new stores and a strong distribution network all over America by the 1930s. Then, in 1936, George Vuitton passed away in unknown circumstances. After George, his son Gaston took over the company, but things got off to a difficult start. This was happening due to the global closure of the third-generation Vuitton's factory and retail outlets due to the impending start of World War II. As a result, Gaston worked with Germany's ruling party to design their luggage, ensuring that his store in Vichy, France stayed open. In 1946, as the war came to an end, Gaston gave his sons control of the company. Since then, the business has experienced consistent development and expanded into the watch, apparel, and sunglasses markets. With a net worth of almost $30 billion, the brand evolved from being mediocre to becoming the top fashion firm internationally. It must be said that Louis Vuitton endured the worst to create the company that is named after him. His distinctive styles are still in use all across the world after three to four generations of struggle, survival, and pioneering. That's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content, and if you did, show some love and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.